Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And uh, we're looking at this today. It's a fixed blade by Real Steel Knives, designed by Ostap Hell. This is the Metamorph fixed blade. Uh, you've probably heard of the Metamorph, the folding knife, because there's been two iterations of that already. It's a knife that's been doing very well. And I guess somebody decided they're going to make a fixed blade version of it. And here it is. It's a long, um, almost sort of stiletto style kind of blade. Um, we've got a long, narrow, letter opener maybe style blade if you want to be a little more genteel about it. Uh, and G10 handle scales with decent steel, Sandvik steel on the blade here, 14C28N. If you're interested in what's designed as a neck knife with cordage and kydex sheath, G10 14C28N. We've got lots of good quality materials here. How good is the knife? Stick around, you're gonna find out right now. Beep. So here's the knife uh, laying on the table. And as you can clearly see, it is a long, narrow knife. Um, it's not a super long knife. This is, you know, a basic, same kind of size knife as a basic EDC folder, at least in the handle. The blade's a little bit more. And a very simple style in that regard, but it's got a couple of those special touches as well that I really like. Now, the sheath here is Kydex, genuine Kydex. There's drainage hole on this side. In case water gets in here, it'll drain out. It's designed basically as a neck carry knife, and as such, it's actually designed this way to carry upside down, hanging upside down on the neck. Uh, the sheath holds the knife in there very snugly. You can't hear any blade play. You know, it's nice and snug in there. And uh, so it hangs very well off the neck. We've got uh, emergency release tabs here so that if uh, it was to get snagged on a branch or something, it wouldn't uh, dangle you to die. You know, it would just pull off, which is a nice touch. So uh, please don't, well, do what you want. It's your, it's your life. Um, but for the rest of us, it's really nice to have that little safety feature right there. The snap retention is quite strong and they give you enough room here for your thumb to get pushed on there. So the grip on the handle as well with those lines in it, make it very easy to pop it out when you want to, but it'll stay in when it's supposed to. So that's a really well done sheath. Now, these holes here, you could use these uh, to get a third party uh, belt loop attachment, but there isn't one from real steel, but it could certainly work with one So now for the knife itself, uh, let's zoom in a little bit on this here Okay, so the knife itself uh, says real steel with a trademark symbol on that side On this side here it says 14 C28N on the Ricasso O-Step Hell design and that's all the writing on this knife. We've got jimping on the spine of the blade here, an inch and a half worth of it. And then you've got this little um, divot or drip dro drop, <laughs> a little uh, opposite of a bump <laughs> right there. And um, Ostep Hell, who I know, I've talked back and forth with him a number of times uh, on uh, private instant messaging, a great guy. And um, that's a design feature for the aesthetic. Yeah, he says it looks good. Um, but he's found that a number of people respond that they use that spot when they're going to be doing delicate work. And uh, yes, that little spot is really good to help hold for delicate work like this if you need to, or, you know, even other pinching grip, just because the change in the texture there, it makes it a grip spot. So that's kind of nice. We've got, you know, the drop point here. There's a swedge from that uh, little point all the way to the tip. Uh, the steel stays fairly thick most of the way, but there's a long distal taper. Uh, the tip of the blade isn't super strong, but it's certainly strong enough. It's made quite well. It's, it, it's kept a, as much strength as you need on a knife like that. If you don't abuse the knife, this tip's going to stay just fine. And then we've got a high saber grind. I'm going to call it a flat grind, a full flat grind. 
um, because it's right about the halfway point. Half of it is a full flat and half of it is like a saber, but it's so high, it's the functional equivalent. We do have a bit of a flat section here that's really good to clamp onto if you've got a sharpening system that has clamps, so that works great. You could always just take the handle scales off and then you've got steel to clamp onto for a clamp system as well, which I often do on fixed blade knives. If the handles come off easily, I do that for sharpening instead of uh, messing up the edges, you know, when I sharpen it. Because sometimes when you're sharpening, you can screw up the G10 right there. So these are T8 screws here. And to come apart, you can take the whole thing apart. I'll show you that in just a minute. And when I do that, you'll be able to get a better look at the lanyard option right back here. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the G10 is, you know, angled off. There's, there's the main side and then there's an angle here. And then, you know, it comes flat before you get to the rolled over spine, the steel. And then it comes back the other way. And every word's designed to have a little extra grip without being offensive. Also, it's narrower here. Uh, let's move that out of the way for now. Uh, this way, it's narrower there and there than it is here. So there's a bulge in the handle. Not super big, just a little bit. And that really helps make that knife that much more comfortable in the hand. I really like it quite a lot. And then it's got these same themes back here where the screws are, the G10 coming off uh, that there is on the original Metamorph. It really is the Metamorph as a fixed blade and a very nice fixed blade at that. Actually, I found another use for this little divot here, but I found it on a different knife. Uh, so I think it's been over a year ago that I reviewed this knife by San Ramu, and it's got a huge divot right there. And I found it to be great when I'm camping. You know, you've got these great big buckets. I'm going to put it, use an ice cream bucket instead. <laughs> but you've got a big bucket, a uh, big uh, container over a fire. Maybe you're cooking a big stew or something. How do you pick this back up if you've got it sitting down on the fire? Well, let's take a look over here. So I've got the imaginary bucket right here. And as long as the handle stays up like that, you come in on the side and you lift it up right at that spot. So lifting up right at that spot right there means that you can securely hold it and it can swing around and it's not going to fall off, especially it's going to be heavy, but you also get to hold it close by, but you're safe from the heat because this wire is going to be hot. And so it's a secure way to move uh, you know, a bucket over a fire. And so that's really cool. Now this one's you know huge, but this one's big enough too. So it's an added use for that. So now let's go over all of the dimensions and those kind of specs. And we'll have this little measuring tape on the screen while we do that. Uh, 14C28N has a rock wall of around 60, which is a nice hard blade. It's a durable steel. It uh, takes a fair bit of punishment before the steel gets distorted. Uh, it does not chip easily. It, uh, it's a very good steel for, for knives. <laughs> the uh, weight of this knife, it's... 94 grams, 3.3 ounces. And uh, when you add in the sheath and the cordage, it's 124 grams, 4.35 ounces. So less than four and a half ounces hanging from your neck. I think that's really, really good, especially since you get a full size blade out of the deal. The length of the cutting edge is 9.78 centimeters, 3.85 inches. The tip to the closest spot on the G10, 10.03 centimeters, 3.95 inches. So that's why they're saying we've got a four inch blade. The blade thickness is 3.05 millimeters, which is 0.12 of an inch, just a tiny hair under uh, an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, and I measure one inch up from the sharpener's trail, so it was just past this little divot. 1.94 centimeters, 0.76 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind right there, 0.41 millimeters, 16 thousandths of an inch. Nice and thin to do very great, precise, easy to slice work. The grind angle on the one side, 15.5 degrees, and on the other side, 21.3 degrees. And that's a perennial issue when people sharpen by hands. You know, you've got a dominant hand sharpening this side over the wheel, you turn it around, and now you got to sharpen the other side and you're not going to get the same angle. And that's normal. That's why I always advise to everybody, 
get good sharpening equipment, learn to sharpen knives yourself, and you can give that thing an awesome edge for the rest of its life. Uh, now for the handle information. The handle length is 11.54 centimeters, 4.54 inches. So four inches, four and a half inches, very nice balance. And I'll actually show the balance in a minute. Uh, the handle thickness, so it's thickest spot being right there in the middle, 1.3 centimeters, 0.512 of an inch. And so that just over half an inch and then, you know, under half an inch. Very nice. The handle depth, that's this measurement. It's largest right there, 2.265 centimeters. That's 0.891 of an inch. So it's a nice small knife indeed. And uh, now for the grip area, the grip area is around 10 centimeters, about four inches. The total length of the knife, 21.5 centimeters, 8.46 inches. So eight and a half inches makes sense. Four and a half, four equals eight and a half. And then um, I didn't talk about how sharp the knife was from the factory. I got 200 bests from the factory sharpness tests. Uh, 200 and, and smaller is considered sharp and bigger than 200 is considered needs sharpening. So it wasn't terrible from the factory, but uh, I just sharpened it and it sharpens up very, very well. And now it's got an awesome edge and it didn't even take long to do. Uh, I needed to sharpen it before I did the review because I use this knife an awful lot. It's a very good knife for almost anything that you want to do. Um, it can be used for um, EDC kind of tasks. Um, it can be used for self-preservation tasks. Um, it can be used for all kinds of things. And it's a very well-made, good steel, good materials, good looking, functional, comfortable knife. <laughs> so here's what it looks like when I take the handle scales off. Taken apart, it's really simple. You know, skeletonizing for it to lose weight. And it's got screws, but they've got Torx head on both ends, which is not the, not, not the best thing because on the one side, uh, well, let's just put it on this way. On the one side, you put the screw in or the bolt. Actually, this side's the bolt, right? You put the bolt in like so if it's going to go in not on me. Come on, get in there. You put the bolt in and it can no longer spin freely. So this side can't spin. So if you're going to take it apart and it just doesn't want to turn, uh, stop. Try the other side. The other side might be the side that's designed to come apart. Otherwise you might just wreck it. There's a little bit of uh, Loctite in there, but not much. The spot for the lanyard, you can easily see it there now. You know, it's designed to go behind the black G10 through the little hole in the handle and back out. Simple, straightforward. If you're one of those guys who likes to make their own handles, you know, you know, you can make your own handle for this. Maybe some fancy exotic wood, maybe. And uh, so that's kind of non interesting, but you wanted to know. Um, and this extra jimping back here, I didn't highlight it before. That helps with the grip as well. And the lanyard option, which you saw also when I took it apart there, you know, it's a good feature. Uh, Real Steel likes to hide the lanyard options a little bit. So there you go. If you're interested in one of these knives, what's the price? It is $62.80 US in most places. Um, at White Mountain Knives, you can get 10% off when you use coupon code CCE, and then that equals $56.52. So that's really good. Um, Amazon Canada has this, although it ships from the United States for $83.84 Canadian. Uh, don't worry about importing fixed blades like this. Uh, the Canadian Border Services is not interested in stopping these knives. So you should have no problem getting it in from outside of Canada. Um, Amazon.com has it for the $62.80. Um, and then there's colored versions. I forgot to talk about the colored versions. There's two colors that are really hard to find for G10 handle colors. A green that looks like a neon yellowy green and a red. 
and those cost a few dollars more, for $65.90. Um, Amazon Germany has it for 66.88 euros, um, or you can buy it directly from Real Steel Knives USA for $78.50. All the prices are in American dollars, unless I said otherwise. So I like this knife. I think it's worth every penny. If you're looking for a neck, if you're looking for a neck knife, especially, uh, you really want to consider this. If you're looking for one of these narrow kind of style knives, uh, but you want to use it as a boot knife, this will work great for that. Um, if you want it for a belt knife, you can buy third party uh, belt buckle or belt attachment options, and uh, that would be great. Thanks for watching my little video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.